Yeah, I think we can call ourselves badass, you know, so there's, uh, you have to be a little bit badass. <laughs> A lot of women who are starting now will rock it. When we get to the point where it's nothing special anymore to play metal no matter your gender, I think that's ultimately the big goal. Actually, the future of metal, in my opinion, belongs to the women. Loud guitars, aggressive bass lines, and guttural vocals. Heavy metal is tough music for tough guys who headbang and drink beer. Heavy metal is for real men. Men who go at each other in the mosh pit. And the women? They have no place here. Or do they? The metal scene has long since opened up and become more diverse. Women now play important roles in the metal community, as fans and as musicians. We went to Germany's biggest heavy metal festival to take a closer look. The first Wacken Open Air Festival took place in 1990, with just 800 visitors and six bands. What began as an idea to combat rural boredom developed into one of the biggest metal festivals in the world, attracting more than 80,000 visitors within just a few years. In 1990, one band with a female lead singer took to the stage here, Axe and Sex. The band from Kiel came back again and again in the following years. A few years later, they were joined by metal icon Doro Pesch, who performed at Wacken for the first time in 1993. Yes, there weren't that many women, maybe a handful, but for me it was quite natural. So I was one of the band. I was the singer and I didn't even realize it myself. I felt so comfortable and I was always treated very, very nicely. Heavy metal emerged out of hard rock in the 1970s, with bands like Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, the scene was clearly male-dominated. This had a lot to do with the perception of roles. Metal has always been seen as hard, aggressive, and loud. Not exactly the stereotypical female characteristics. And yet, women were there right from the start. Jinx Dawson, who founded the U.S. band Coven in 1969, is considered one of the first. Occultism and black masses, staged by a woman who described herself as a witch. That was hard stuff at a time when the hippies were still celebrating peace and flower power. One of the first metal bands whose members were only women was Girl School, founded in 1978 they had to put up with a lot of sexist comments. Critics tore their albums apart. Their career only really took off when the late Motorhead frontman Lemmy Kilmister stood up for them. They're great. The people treat them like second-class persons because they're girls. It's really disgusting. Girl School are still around. They were, and still are, frequent guests at Wacken Open Air. And they're friends with festival boss Thomas Jensen. I worked for Girls School for a long time. Girls School, which is actually a girl band. No, I mean, they'll punch you in the face, don't worry. And I don't care whether it's sung by a guy or a lady. It doesn't matter at all. Jensen has never differentiated between men and women in his work. What counts for him is what people can do. And so the Wacken crew is just as diverse as the festival's lineup. For us, it's natural. So I don't think that dividing things that way is helpful. 
Our booking crew doesn't go asking first if a band singer is a woman. Nach ist da jetzt eine Sängerin drin. Sabine Klassen first played at Bakken Open Air in 2001. She's been involved in the metal scene since 1980 with her band Holy Moses. This whole genre, everything, was just open to us. We could just do what we wanted. It was just new. You're happy and, of course, it's a nice feeling to have started something for the scene. Klassen is regarded as the very first growling and extreme woman in metal. Her band members call her the mother of all growlers. It's an honor, I have to say, that people say, hey, Sabina, we found out that you were the first woman in the world to do these blatant growls, and I didn't plan it. It's what came out of me. It's now normal for metal women to growl, shout, and roar. It's not a question of gender, but of technique. Both women and men have to train their diaphragm and vocal cords to produce such sounds. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wacken! Wacken! <laughs> Nervosa is a four-piece all-female thrash metal band. The four formed in Brazil in 2010. Nervosa can mean edgy or angry in Portuguese. The band's aggressive appearance initially surprised people in their home country. Yes, of course, there is a lot of um, prejudice, you know, like kind of uh, things that the people think that the all the Brazilian women are always naked because this is carnival. <laughs> this exists. I don't guilt the people because this exists. But these four women don't fulfill those cliches. So Nervosa's beginnings were pretty difficult, but they persevered. I think everything that it's new, we face some challenges. We know that the metal, it's more male thing, you know? I particularly never pay attention so much. I was just want to do what I love, what I dream, you know, and I was surrounded by persons that was helping and supporting me. The toxic people that was talking like bad things, I was not paying attention. I say, I don't care, I don't care. I, I have to listen to the, the critic stuff to be better, of course, to grow, but I say like everything is possible. Female metal musicians are not afforded those freedoms everywhere. In other regions of the world, they have to fear for their lives because of their passion for metal. In conservative, largely Muslim-majority countries in the Middle East, many metal bands, male and female alike, have to play underground. British journalist Orlando Crowcroft spent six years observing the metal scene in countries such as Egypt, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Iran, and he wrote the book Rock in a Hard Place about it. Musicians have told him that they sometimes face draconian punishments, from imprisonment, floggings, and canings to the death penalty. Iranian band Arsamas, for example, fled abroad due to the threat of a prison sentence. Miraj Ansari, singer of the band Master of Persia, was flogged for alleged Satanism. When a big mullah says kafir, this is no joke. They don't need the law. They will kill you. Ansari's bandmate Anahid was also in danger. Women are not allowed to sing in public in Iran. The reason given is that women singing supposedly provokes sexual desire in men. Anahid sees this as the main reason why Iranian women are not so active in music, especially in heavy metal and rock. Together with Ansari, she left the country in 2012. There was the fear of arrest and even having acid thrown on the face or bodies of women who were active in music. Lebanon is considered comparatively tolerant towards heavy metal. Still, the scene is viewed with suspicion. 
Lilas Mayasi is the founder of the all-female metal band Slave to Sirens. It took the guitarist more than a year to find all the musicians for her band, and then the women had to assert themselves. In certain cases, some guys would think that we're not good enough or they wouldn't take us seriously or maybe we're not physically capable to play these instruments. Some people outside the metal wouldn't understand this sort of music and they would curse us. They think that we're bad and this is not ladylike to them playing metal. The women of Slave to Sirens now live in several countries. Lilas Mayasi, however, has remained in Lebanon and leads the band from there. There are metalheads all over the world. But how many are female, and what do they listen to? Studies on this are not very representative. The group of respondents is small, and metal is very diverse. There are more than 50 subgenres, such as doom, thrash, black, or death metal. Some even speak of several hundred varieties. In his study, Measuring the Metalhead, psychologist Nico Rose found out which styles women prefer. The result? Women tend to like melodic metal, such as gothic or metalcore. According to Rose's research, the female fan base for classic metal is almost as large as the male fan base. Under the sign of the devil horns, your social status is blurred. All that matters is how hard you party to the music. Whether hard or soft, the scene has long since opened up, both on and off stage. Working with women has become completely normal for many male musicians, like Chris Harms from Lord of the Lost. Above all, I work with people regardless of their gender. I'm happy when I see strong women in metal or in the music industry in general, but I've also experienced that when you emphasise that, it can sometimes have a negative effect. Women actually want to be perceived just as normal in an industry like this, like all the men, and I think that's particularly important. I think we can call ourselves badass, you know, so there's, uh, you have to be a little bit badass. <laughs> Self-confidence is an important element for female metal bands. Burning Witches, featuring women musicians from Switzerland and the Netherlands, not only have plenty of that, they also have a lot of fun playing music. Uh, well, it's just fun, you know, it's just fun to be with, with all girls. Girls just want to have fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's the cliche that it's it's sometimes nice to be with all girls, you know. And and that was the idea to to start a band, have fun, make uh, heavy metal, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's the start. <laughs> it's fun to be strong and loud and sexy. For the metal divas, revealing outfits are not a contradiction to the hard music they play. Their appearance is an integral part of the show, but the purpose is not necessarily to fulfill the fantasies of their male fans. The Dark Divas website puts metal women in the spotlight. According to Ursula Fehler and Florian Dunza from Austria, who run the site, sexiness is simply part of the stage persona. The idea that women can only be successful if they present themselves in a sexy way is completely outdated. Many examples show that this is no longer the case. Lead singers with pure operatic voices shaped the image of women in the metal scene in the early 2000s, fueled by successful bands like Evanescence, Within Temptation and Nightwish. The term female-fronted metal bands established itself. It's a very limiting term. It would also exclude an extremely large number of women, other female musicians such as guitarists, bassists, drummers and so on. Women can do everything. They don't just have to be pretty front women. For me, sexy is just wearing the vest, the leather vest put on the chain, on my like torn pants, simple eyeliner, and that's it. 
That's for me, sexy, and I feel comfortable. People either like me the way I am or they don't. I'm not going to get a makeover or anything. I'm not going to change my outfit either. It's important to give this tip to the young girls. If you like it, do it. But don't do it for others. If you do, then do it for yourself. If you feel comfortable. Metalheads are like one big family. Everyone is welcome, regardless of gender. Wacken Open Air reflects the diversity of the scene. What unites people is their love of music. Wacken is considered a particularly peaceful festival. Here you can be who and what you want to be. That's encouraged by various themed areas, like the wasteland. The post-apocalyptic area has been an integral part of Wacken Open Air since 2013. Inspired by films such as Waterworld or Mad Max, the artist group Wasteland Warriors performs wild shows and is closely associated with the metal festival. Among the wildly costumed people in the group, there are as many women as men. And wearing costumes like this, with heavy weapons, makes those women feel something special. It's of confidence, obviously. Yes. It's like oh, yes. being as strong as male people are, or male people have been written in the past, so it's really nice to just be a badass tank girl or a warrior or druid, whatever it is, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's like really nice. The Wasteland Warriors have complete freedom when designing their costumes. With one condition, it has to be warrior-like. The reactions of the festival audience to the Wasteland women are varied. It really depends. Some people are just very bold and just come up come up to us and talk to us, but others are just like keeping their distance more often because they don't know how to deal with it, which is great. That's like the independence that we want. It's like, yes, watch your step, mate. <laughs> They're a little bit afraid, I think, but they have a respect, a bigger respect yeah, exactly. than in normal yeah. life. But nobody should need a weapon or a scary mask to feel comfortable. The metal scene claims to be the safest of all. But is that an idealized view? In the early summer of 2023, the scandal surrounding alleged sexual assaults at Rammstein concerts shattered the image of supposedly safe rock concerts. For months, the music world debated how safe festivals and concerts are for women. Casey is the lead singer for Dropkick Murphys. The Irish folk punk band from Boston played at Wacken Open Air for the first time in 2023. Punks and metalheads are very similar, he says. In the punk world, uh, the community aspect is very look out for each other and that women would be very safe. And if they weren't, uh, to both, both as a performer and a fan, that uh, the audience is like their big brother, or, you know, big sister and everyone's looking out for each other. Casey plays many different kinds of festivals with his band, and he's also seen other situations. A lot of these country music festivals in America, there's incredible amounts of violence and sexual assault, and these are at the performances of bands that are supposed to be singing about family values and being good to each other, whereas they would probably view a punk and metal crowd as disrespectful and non-honorable people, yet I feel like you would have way less, uh, you know, bad behavior at our shows or, or metal shows. Bad things can happen in everywhere, it doesn't matter the type of music, you know. If the people use too much drugs or get drunk, we can do a lot of wrong things that we will probably will feel bad later, I don't know. And But in general, I feel really safer because I think the culture of metal in a world, you know, it's more or less the same. We have the same way to think it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not only a, a music, you know. So in general, I feel really safe. I don't know the girls, but for me, 
I think there's a, a nice contradiction between the appearance and the character because the appearance like uh, dark and uh, ominous and heavy and like and as a behavior people are very nice and very um, yeah very polite everyone is trying to create a safe space for everyone and that's so beautiful in the in the metal community There's also a consensus among the fans. Metalheads stick together. People are helpful, new friendships are made and celebrated at the camping areas. We've never been grabbed, touched or anything else. You get offered drinks and everything and shelter everywhere, no matter which camp you go to or on the festival site. It's just like one big family here. That's nice. I have never had a problem with it, never had the feeling that I was being picked on. They're actually all really nice and friendly all the time. Even if you're at the front of the stage, if you're dancing or pogoing or moshing, you're always helped up or something. I've never had a bad experience, I really have to say. Heavy metal seems to have the magical power to bring people together. There are even studies indicating that metal music can have a calming and positive effect on the psyche. Metal can give emotional support and make you strong. I grew up with it and also it's just like the only music I can really become when I listen to it. Uh, it, does, it doesn't matter how, how heavy it is or how, how loud, I'm just really calm inside when I listen to it. I don't know, it, it's like metal gives you power to, to, to courage to do some things and I don't know, it um, gives you more security. For, for, for the women, and it's like a, a friendship, a, a lot of, of, of family here. Another study found that metal can help young people through difficult times. Lilas Mayasi from Slave to Sirens can confirm this. My parents got separated, so I was living all that. Um, so metal music was, was giving me a voice, and it was giving me, like, like a reason to live and it was so powerful to me and it really really helped me get up in the morning and just go so yeah metal music gave me a lot i mean i think without metal music i don't think i would be here honestly in the meantime women have gained a powerful partner the internet. Women who position themselves successfully online can be role models. With their internet presence, female bands are also making sure that others can be more daring. For the new generation, the new girls, the young girls are coming and coming and coming and appearing. Every day I discover new girls on Instagram, you know, like it's the new resource that we have. So I see they are coming. So we get a lot of young girls looking up to us and sending out messages. Like last time I was in France, there's a girl who texted me and said like, I, I'm learning guitar because of you. So that's really powerful. And it motivates me to move forward and keep pushing with, despite all the challenges that we're facing. And it's a responsibility as well, because as a role model, there, there is a responsibility. As female-fronted bands become more visible online, fans want to see them on the big stages. The goal is to see more female acts getting booked and playing big stages. So once we get there, I feel like, yes, of course, the, the future is female, especially the, the leaders in the metal industry, like behind the scene, the organizers, the booking agents, these powerful women who are bringing things together and tying this entire community. So, yeah, definitely the future is of metal is female. The metal scene is still dominated by men, 
But young women are closing the gap and can't be stopped. Being female is no longer an obstacle in the heavy metal scene. The best example? Doro Pesch, who's been part of it for four decades. And we have a song that's the first single called Time for Justice. And we chose it because I think it's very, very important worldwide, because in many countries, women in particular are not allowed to move freely. The music we make is not allowed there either. So there's still a lot, a lot to do. And yes, we'll keep fighting. We'll fight for the good and especially the women. They rock it. We can see each other, we can support each other. And uh, I see, actually, the future of metal, in my opinion, belongs to the women. What do you think? Does the future of metal belong to women? And which female metal bands do you listen to? Let us know in the comments. <laughs>